What is good? We're back. We're on the buy side this time. I don't know if everybody likes the buys or the sells more. I think the sells. People slant negative. For but sure. We're gonna have some fun with the buys. We got an ADP review, Superflex tight end premium. Uh, we're gonna go through here and, and some of the biggest buys. Uh, skyrocketing risers, <laughs> breakouts, moves to make, all the splashy title names that you have to have to get your shit clicked on. So here we go. There you go. For me. How this starts off, I'm loving this pocket of quarterbacks from the second round of the third round, Sands, Jaden Daniels. Um, but the fact that I can get guys like Herbert, Kyler, Love, Lawrence, Dak, and Purdy all as second and third options mm -hmm. is outstanding. Yeah, I absolutely love it. It's, it's a great area to be in it's you got so many options to to be able to start your build out right and you don't exactly know how the board's going to fall right. but in a lot of cases you have the option of a, a decent quarterback to you know midway through the third quarterback whether it's or third round whether it's Trevor Slyden or Dak or Purdy and you know you can get your second or first depending on how you went with it or third depending on how you went with it right, right right so i just i love the flexibility right now i'm getting out of the second and third round of quarterbacks uh like i said except for daniels and radp i'm not i'm not gonna probably take him in that area mm -hmm. uh, but i love it you could it gives you so many options to start your team off in different ways and, and be fairly comfortable and confident that you can build it out without really missing the boat on quarterbacks and being in the fifth, sixth round thinking that, you know, JJ McCarthy's the best quarterback left on the board. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, seeing as how we just rolled down this ADP looking for sales, I'm picking up what you're putting down right there. You're not going to pick a bad player in the first round, right? Not, not today, well, not, sir, not, idiot. not this year. <laughs> like do you do have a rookie quarterback in there that we haven't seen on the NFL field? We, you do have Caleb Williams in there, but you're not picking a bad player in the first round. So if you have a quarterback or not, like you said, in the second round, you got chances at, you know, early second, you got chances at Justin Herbert and Kyler Murray. We know those guys play ball. Mm -hmm. And then middle second round, you got Jordan Love, who finished the season as uh, as on fire as any quarterback in the league. Everybody knows how young that wide receiver core is, et cetera, et cetera. And then you end up at the end of the second round with a Trevor Lawrence shot, oh. which is incredible. And then, like you said, early third, Dak and Brock. So you can have two studs quarterbacks or not and then get a, a quarterback in the third early third now so you're not going to count you're not going to be sitting here at the end of the third and counting on brock or dak falling but i, I love all that I, mean, I love the value of a brace hall at two seven mm. i couldn't find anybody necessarily to sell above him so that's that's what i mean like i don't think you're taking bad players to get i mean this is a loaded year i enjoy the dak prescott brock purdy value in the early third and that is that's a really good spot to be uh, building your team there and, and have options there for sure i i love it I've, I've been we've been doing a lot of mocking over in on the discord we got a free discord we got a five dollar discord go join those you get extra episodes with the patreon membership so go make sure you check that all that out and you should be subscribed and you should be hitting us with those five stars and helping your boys out uh but yeah the, the pocket of quarterbacks right now from from beginning of two to mid three is a whole lot of fun yeah and that that option give I me mean, you could have justin jefferson in the middle of the first round or if you have a little bit later pick you can get jamar chase cd lamb in the first round get your Brees hall in the middle of the second and still get a brock purdy or a dak prescott you can have right. you can have the best wide receiver and the best running back and you think b john's the first that's fine but that's you know the value of a sliding Brees hall is is what i'm talking about there is in you know Stud, right. stud, quarterback, build, or quarterback, stud, wide receiver, quarterback. You know, yeah. you just there's you could get Anthony Richardson, Justin Herbert, or Kyler Murray, mm -hmm. or Burrow and and Murray if Burrow falls, mm -hmm. and then then you could come back and still get the third in Dak Prescott and Brock Purdy. So we're gonna have episodes talking about draft strategies and if that plays out, how you play the rest of your draft, and yep. if you drafted wide receiver and the running back, and and you got one of those other quarterbacks like Dak. Lawrence or or uh, Purdy how to then go about building that out so be on the lookout for those we're going to get into the draft strategy of things as we roll on here through July and we're right in the heart of uh, startup season so uh, what would be another buy for you big biggest of companies 
I mean, going down the list here, uh, we spoke about uh, in the sales when we when we skipped out on some quarterbacks here. I, I'm buying Nico Collins in the middle of the fourth round. I'm buying Tank Dell in the middle of the fifth. If Tank Dell's the fifth player on my team, I'm super happy about it. And if I already if I already picked Nico Collins, that's not going to keep me from buying Tank Dell in the fifth. So I, I I love those spots and those ADPs for those guys, and and I'm enjoying seeing them on my team. Yeah, Nico is is I think you they've got themselves a bona fide number one stud there. Obviously, mm-hmm. they added digs for a year, so some people are scared off of the Nico, but I, take I, advantage. I I agree one hundred percent. I've traded for Nico multiple times this year. I traded for him in a league that we all three have together. And we just won the championship in a league. And just to give you an opportunity to see, we, we gave away the one nine and a one quarterback league and Tajay Spears, the guy I traded, the guy that picked that made the trade with us took Trey Benson. So he got, he took the pick to get Trey Benson and he took Tajay Spears and put it together. And that's what we got Nico for. So we put Nico in our starting lineup and Tajay Spears in our taxi squad. And we obviously had the draft pick available to pick one nine. And so, I mean, I think we knocked that out of the park. Mm -hmm. So we put a stud in Nico Collins on our team and I've traded for Nico two other times, at least in that comes into my mind. So I, I'm all in. Right. When, when when you get a a really good player who broke out in a, in a, in a great offense with a, a young, good quarterback tied to him, will, will CJ take another huge step forward and be, one of the best quarterbacks in the league, TBD, but we know that he's at a baseline, a, a pretty good quarterback, right? right. If you're going to give me the discount because people are worried about digs for a year or so, I'm going to take it and, right. and I'll be fine with that. So I, I'm down with that Nico ADP because if digs wasn't there, Nico Collins might be a second round startup pick. Exactly. Right. So you're getting a little and discount. It could be next year. Right. You're getting a little discount built in. I don't hate that at all. Um, and then you mentioned Tank Dell. You know that 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 brings me into another range of of guys that I like buying. You know DJ Moore is interesting at the five two for me. A lot of the times he's he's like a guy that if I let's say I took a tight end, a running back, and a quarterback, and maybe I have another you know two quarterbacks or whatever, and I need a, that first wide receiver to be that one that I kind of trust a good a bit a good amount. It's, it's DJ Moore and he's kind of like one of the last ones remaining, but really, which is, you know, I don't, I, I like the DJ Moore ADP and find myself going down that alley a, a reasonable amount, but really down here at six, three pickings, uh, in the same vein of DJ Moore, the only difference is, is DJ Moore. We've seen him be the guy and we've seen him dominate and we've seen, we've seen how good he is now. A lot more target competition. You have George Pickens down here at six, three, who has no target competition mm-hmm. uh, and has a really good chance to just emerge of being the Nico Collins of this year. Obviously, Ooh. George Pickens is already on everybody's radar. Nico was a not. A much higher level, um, yeah, starting from. But I just I think George is going to come out here and just absolutely dominate and that to be at 6'3 and still potentially be able to get a number one top 10 wide receiver fantasy points-wise potentially I think is is fantastic. I love everything you just said about. I mean, I got Pickens. I got Pickens on all my teams. When you see George Pickens playing football and not throwing his helmet, there's his talent is absolutely undeniable, and I think his upside is top five as far as fantasy points. Mm-hmm. To touch on DJ Moore, what you were saying about, and and that's why he's above Pickens here too. Like the trust. If DJ Moore at five two would be the first wide receiver you've taken, as in you're taking him over this guy or that guy, you know you're not missing. You know, you're not messing it up with the pick. Like, is there more upside out there potentially if, you know, just somebody that you're salivating over about the potential, like a Pickens. And obviously that's a round later, there's 12 picks. So there's, you know, value to be, to be gained there if you're going to trade down, but DJ Moore, you're not messing it up. He's a high quality receiver on a, on a rising team with a quarterback coming in. That's going to be already as soon as he steps on the field more capable passer than the right. guy that just left definitely the best quarterback you know, he's ever played with. be the best quarterback he's ever played with i don't mind the dj more i don't find myself landed on him putting him on my, my team often because of where you know what's going on in the drafts but i probably should at least look at him you yeah. know because you're not messing it up hey guys a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the ff dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free discord channel or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. 
all for your pleasure. In that same range there, and somebody that I've only just now clicked in our latest mock that we're doing is Kyron Williams. And I think I got there because of the running back video we just made and because of the investment that I can make in the Rams offense and the leading running back for the Rams and the guy who was only second to Christian McCaffrey in points per game last year, and the guy who was maybe first or second, I think it's second, in total team opportunities, which is rush attempts and targets inside the 10 in the NFL last year. Mm -hmm. So what do we want? Touchdowns. Right. What are we going to get with the Rams offense running back? Touchdowns. And they just and, they really and ins- they really shored up the interior center guard center like of that, sure. of that line. They've... they've, they've made good investments there that line is is completely turned i think it's going to be a really good line they're going to be a really tough offense to deal with they're building the new brand of of football they've reinvented themselves they're going to they're they're going to be a more physical and you saw that with kyron went on the field last year just the brand that they were trying to to project and and turn things into and they're just going to be a, a, a team that's going to give you hell and it's going to be really physical well, I throughout love, the game. I love all that. And I love the vision that the, the brass is having for this team because that's what you need to be doing when you have a Hall of Fame quarterback in his getting in his later years like this. You know, Stafford is the general, but he's, you know, five, six years ago, he needed to stop taking some of those hits. Mm-hmm. You know, the Lions beat him up. And so, like, why not take that mind shift, mindset shift, and as a franchise and go and try to be – more of a run first team or at least balanced more and not have Stafford out there trying to have to sling it 45 times a game let him be more efficient let the offense be very efficient that just pairs up with like I'm not buying Kyron Williams without Corum I'll buy right. Corum well, later that's, that's the real you know? kicker that and uh, that that really drives Kyron home that's is the that, value is that you is can the... get Corum and it doesn't it does, it's not two rounds from now right it's the 10th 11th round where you can smash him and now hey we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not. This is. This isn't like a. That's what really locks it up for yeah, me. Yeah, Corum's. Not, his, this ain't out for blue, Bo. You don't have to pay two rounds later. <laughs> you know, the, than you did getting. Um, and I'm sorry. I like Corum. Good player. He ain't Kyron. He's no. Not Kyron that's fine. That's right fine. Now. You know, and maybe he'll get there. Older guy and had a good offensive line and a lot of opportunity in college. And I think it's a good. He's gonna be a great role player from them. And they missed Kyron when he wasn't there. But I just I. I don't understand how these people think that Kyron just did what he did, and then all of a sudden Blake Corum's just going to rip it all away from him. I just, I just don't see it happening. But in the same vein, I'm telling you that I like, I feel good about Kyron because I can get Blake Corum exactly. later, and I think Blake Corum's a good player. Exactly, and, and I have, I have been missing these fourth, fifth round running backs all off season long in these mocks trying to figure out how I'm building my teams and I'm just came in and, and Kyron slid down Kyron was higher all off season long and now and I, and I guess it's because of the quorum draft pick and that oh, yeah. and, and obviously he had that foot issue so between those two things yeah. quorum and now there's the talk about the foot issue and he might not be ready for training camp and all that stuff and all that plays right in to giving me that much more value on the RB2 points per game last year and then locking up Corum later. That's I love that package in a startup right now. It makes me feel so good having the Rams backfield locked up for my dynasty team. Yeah. All right, so to recap, we got a little off the rails wagon? off the rails there. I should say off the wagon, but that, you know, we're you always be slightly on the wagon. I never know which way we want to be on is the wagon. Is it on the wagon? This if podcast is, wagon. you know, the wagon is a slow bumpy ride that never ends. That's being on the that's being sober on the wagon. It's uh, slow and bumpy. Okay. It mm-hmm. takes okay. forever. Like and you're probably going to die got of it. cholera. Got it, got it. Uh, or, or or you didn't caulk up and ford the river correctly. And right. Yeah. You got you might yeah. Lost a couple ox drowned <laughs> in the Missouri River. <laughs> so to summarize, 5-1 Kyron, we like that. Five two, we like DJ Moore, you know, a little bit, and for, for some reasons, a little and then, bit. <laughs> uh, we like Pickens, but in between there, I think there's one more that we need to talk about before we leave this area. Good area, fun area, great area of the draft right here. You got H. M. Barkley, Williams, Moore, Pitts, Flowers, Metcalf, Tank Dell, Kenny Walker, T, and then T. J. Hawkinson. I think is just obviously a little older. Coming off an injury, not in tight end years, he's not terribly old. He ain't old, really young, but but. A little older than some of those other guys, but coming off an injury, and obviously we, we don't know what the quarterback play is going to be like over there, but Hawkins is just a G, and that off as soon as he came over there, everything was that just plenty of volume for Hawkinson, so I don't really care who's throwing the ball. 
Hawkins mm-hmm. is they're they're going to be running plays to mm-hmm. T.J. Hawkinson. They just paid him as well. Mm-hmm. He's he's there for a while. They got a big three that's pretty nasty with that's it. with Justin Jefferson, Addison, and him. They got a big three. There's all kind of different head coaching styles or offensive coordinator styles going on in these 32 teams in the NFL, and some of them throw it to everybody on the team, and some of them throw it to a very very tight knit group of people. And, and the Vikings organization and the way it's going to work out this year, given health, is J.J. and Hawkinson are getting fed, right? Yep. And, and why, why would they do anything different that this has been working? And Jordan Addison, too. I think Jordan Addison's going to get plenty of targets. So I, I, those three guys, like you said, it's the big three of the Vikings. Do we expect the efficiency of a Kirk Cousins? No. No. No, we do not. So will um, TJ Hawkinson be projected and on the way to be in tight end one again? Probably not, but he's easily going to be inside the top five for years to come, I think. I agree. I completely agree. You're getting the injury discount here. Mm-hmm. You'd never, if he wouldn't have went down, mm-hmm. he'd be fucking, mm-hmm. they'd be like, is it Laporta or Hawkinson as a, as a tight end one? Hawkinson just came off this crazy, you know. And yeah. Some people would be like, well, maybe he's three, but nobody's putting him at three right now. And he's certainly not being drafted as three, so I love that. And a guy that I always find problem uh, passing up and has is, is been my biggest buy all offseason long is JSN. Had an unfortunate rookie season. They've completely changed everything they're doing, so just forget everything you knew about the Seahawks. And we knew it was going to be a rough season. I mean, we I mean, knew he wasn't going to do that well, but people just forget that. Oh, he didn't do well, so now I'm mad at right. him. Right. He got drafted, and everybody lowered expectations, and then they kind of forgot about it, and then he got hurt, wrist injury, didn't play. You're going to be running a ton of 11. I think you can get JSN out wide. This dude was the number one receiver over everybody last year. And, and how quickly we'll turn that tide. And it's not like he boat. He didn't play bad. He just was on a crowded team, which we knew. And he was a little young and he was hurt. And then but he still had 63 receptions, 93 targets, dude. Like yeah. they're gonna they're gonna ratchet up the passing even more. On 60, this go. 63 catches for 630 yards. He didn't even have that bad of a, right. a freshman season. He's 22 years old, and I mean, and Geno didn't play as did he like he did the year before. And now the offense is changing. It's going to be a lot more spread yeah. out and push it down the field. Right. And Tyler Lockett isn't any younger. I think that JSN is a great value this year. The post hype sleeper. Let's go. I like the new system. I like the new offense, the the idea of what it could be. Think Washington Huskies a little bit of what you saw. And that's a, you know, that's a very pro style offense. That's why I think people were very attracted to Penix, even mm-hmm. though some other people weren't, but they were doing a lot. He had a lot on his shoulders. They mm-hmm. were doing a lot of pro style concepts. That's why I think Grub Grub fits right into this new regime of, uh, of this new Seahawks era. It's going to be, I think a lot of fun to watch and it's, you know, you could be in that sixth round, and it's not the most fun thing, but I think it's going to be a super rewarding pick. And this dude is this is the same guy who, you know, Chris Olave and, and Garrett Wilson said, this is the best fucking guy out of us all. Yeah. Was it Olave and Wilson? Or yeah. Was it some, yeah, was it was guy? Olave and Garrett Wilson. The guy asked the three of them, who's the best one? Yeah. And the, the boy said, uh, Jason. And, I, and no, none of y'all have patience. And we talk about this. We'll talk about this a million times in, in season that there's no patience in yeah. Dynasty Gamers. And have some patience because this guy is going to be a real, real threat. And y'all are going to be so salty y'all don't have him. Yeah. So that, none of y'all are Jay-Z you know, with these chicks. You, you <laughs> need to have some patience. Okay? He's, yeah. he's, 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 he doesn't, he's granted that. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Luxury. Luxury. He's he has that luxury, okay? You don't wait on these players, okay? Right. Yeah. No, I mean JSN's a, a huge one for me at, at in that sixth round. I just I can't I can't not do it. Big Co, what what would be kind of the next must buys here? I'm I'm thinking Brooks and Benson for me for running back wise. Yeah, those are fun guys to be picking up. I'm gonna do it, boys. I'm gonna do it. It's the Sean Watson. It's Deshaun Watson mm. in the seven three. There's, Tigers. there's just uh, we talked about it in a mock draft, a, a dynasty draft startup, is you know type thing that we did about a month or five weeks ago or so, and and somebody hit the comments and said, I can't believe you cherry picked the stats like that to come up with a points per game, and all oh, I that's said, the dumbest comment ever. All I said was. If he played in five games or whatever it was, and one of them he had negative point two points because he went out with a shirt hurt shoulder. Right. So I took that game out because he had a point a 
he had one three he three hurt. attempts and he right. didn't play in the game. So right. like I did cherry pick that to give him eighteen points a game. Right. Because he didn't freaking play in the game. Pretty simple stuff. If he would have had twelve points and he played in the game, I wouldn't have changed it. And I would have right. just came up with his seventeen points per game. It's right. okay. So don't hit me in the Six, comments. Sixteen percent of the snaps in that game there. Right. So and you know, it's and it's not I mean at the Colts indoors, it's not like he was I took him out of a game against the Ravens here, you know? <laughs> right. So, uh, which he crushed uh, against the Ravens. And he did not play well, and these, these points are good. That's what I'm saying. Right. That's so, always been our stance on Deshaun right now is, like, you can hate him for who he is or what he allegedly did, but, like, fantasy-wise, the floor is fucking pretty solid. It's the it's high valley. You got a you got a tale of two cities right here. Like, you got... Everyone's he's, so mad about how much he made. He's paid so much money, yeah. and... They bring in the Bama wide receiver that they just picked up, Jerry Judy. So they, they they bring in Jerry Judy as well. They brought in Elijah Moore last year, trying to give him some stuff, to give him some fireworks here. And Joku's basically in his prime now, right? Mm-hmm. And Joku came in the league 15 years ago, and now I he's think tw- he was 15 when he came in the league. Yeah, now he's 28. So he's got play, and, and Amari yeah. Cooper's still a stud. He's reached full chief status, right? Now, right. Know? And Joku he was is hunting lions before. Now he's just telling people to go hunt lions. Is the chief, right? He's just sending people out on missions. So he's got Amari Cooper. He's got Njoku. So those are two playmakers. Amari Cooper's an absolute stud that can do everything, mm-hmm. and Njoku is a mismatch above miss. And they've, they've they've got a great cabinet of understudies there with Tillman and Thrash and right. David Bell could still potentially be okay and that's you after know? we talk right. about that's the, after having judy and elijah Moore. those guys are all chilling those that's are wide receiver. Like that's they, wide they, receiver four five six if they get one if they get one of those three guys to be a good player after one of those other guys flame out or leave on a contract they're in great shape right for skill yeah and i mean and so good all line good defense and nick chubb ain't getting any younger if he does come back from that knee injury right. so all they've all they've done is show you that they're investing in Watson and investing in this offense to say, hey, let's go do this. Now, you have this, you have the coach and scheme fit of Watson, but as bad as it was, and he was still like a, you know, QB1, he was still giving you, you know, QB10, QB12 type numbers, then if it gets any better, right? right. If it gets any better, and my, I mean, why can't it get any right. better? So obviously, agree. obviously, he's in AFC North, so they they're going to play in six slobber knockers every year. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, and I mean, he did crush it against the Ravens when he came in after he got shot up in the locker room. So all he needs to do is take a shot every game and play fearless and be a stud. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him be great, which is why he got the money he got. He may never be and that guy again. That's the, fine. But if he does, the, you, the, you can't say he's not going to be yeah. for sure. Is he is he going to be? Probably not. But is it in? AJ Wayne's got the. Box score. Box stats. scores up right there. PPR, like position rank, five, 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 right? Three years in a row. And so, and he yeah. didn't. Yeah, and then, but 270th the year after that. I mean, well, it's been, you know, I don't know how to come up with that number, but it's been, <laughs> it's been a couple years since he's been relevant and he hadn't played a lot and he had a lot going on last year. It, like two different arm injuries, like an arm injury and a shoulder injury, blah, blah, yeah. whatever happened. In a super flex league, if you don't, if you're not fat on quarterbacks by the first three rounds, like we talked about earlier, is slim pickings and there's huge question marks everywhere mm-hmm. um you know so you're gonna you're gonna tie your boat up to baker mayfield are you gonna take the chance on bo nicks in the eighth round like you can you can take job job you know deshaun watson and bo nicks back to back to see what happens but mm-hmm. i'm just you're gonna you're gonna take the roll the dice on levis you know yep. both all those guys you know are not guaranteed nfl starters moving forward obviously baker just got a contract but and good for baker baker it's been a is it was a lot of pie in the face after that, you know, one one draft pick uh, for him. But the quarterbacks are hard to find, and after you get out of those first three rounds, and I just feel like the the downs, the 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 floor and the ceiling is a is a nice combination for for Watson and the Browns. Yeah, yeah. Quit pocket watching, too. Don't don't worry about how much money Deshaun Watson made. Yeah, <laughs> like. He, he played well, got us some money, and guess what? Cleveland has never, in your whole they fucking overpaid. life, has never had a goddamn quarterback. They had to Most overpaid. of the people who are listening have never had a quarterback. Yeah. So they went and tried to remedy that, and maybe it worked out, maybe it didn't. Right now it hadn't. Mm-hmm. But, go, you know, you, you're going to talk shit if they don't do anything, and then they try to do something, and obviously it didn't go the way they wanted it to. Sure. Uh, but I think all that talk is, is quite silly about how much money he made and that he's a bum. And I'm like, well, admit, you know, they at least they tried. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate. The, um, you know, private life stuff. 
Well, the, uh, of obviously of crazy shit popped. What are you up. talking about the Bra- like if if that stuff never happened, he's on the Texans and CJ Stroud's playing somewhere else. But potentially. If, well, I mean, if if none of that happened, he's not leaving the Texans. Yeah. There's no chance. He maybe. was crushing. Maybe. And the Texans. Or maybe he were, might have just wanted out of there. Uh, well, he but, did. yeah. Anyway, um, he definitely wanted out of there. I kind of like I kind of like the Will Levis at eight oh six, but I'm not I'm not going screaming by there. You know that I love this Christian Kirk at that eight oh eight. I like the Penix at the eight twelve. And then I really like Marquise at 9 6. And then I love the Deontay Johnson at 9 12. Those are the guys that in pretty much every draft, I'm scooping those guys 8, eight 9 10 if I can. I think those guys are, are outstanding buys. They're not terribly old. They have wide receiver one upside in volume. Um, or uh, in Hollywood Brown's case, I think he can bring the vertical game back to uh, Kansas City and is really in a position to kind of explode early and give them something they hadn't had in a while they got a rookie and another guy who might be suspended for a while yeah um so i just feel like he's in a really good position there and we've seen him be elite we've seen him be a top five uh wide receiver ppr uh through chunks of seasons when he was healthy and had a healthy quarterback we've seen him be good on the ravens even people forget that he was really good on the ravens for that season oh well, sure. to start that year off he was like a top five guy so yeah. you know i love hollywood brown is probably my favorite pick of of the entire draft in that ninth 10th round if he falls there love the christian kirk he's he's not the quote-unquote wide receiver one for the jaguars but he's the fucking wide receiver one for the jaguars everything kind of runs around what kirk is doing Mm -hmm. uh had that big goose egg to start the year off last year and then just the volume that we could see with with kirk and it just seems like trevor and kirk just have a little something have some chemistry and Kirk was was very missed when he wasn't out there to not be a guy like who is that bona fide number one guy for him to miss time. I felt like really, really hurt the Jaguars last year uh, and kind of how they operate week over week. So, yeah, um, I agree. I mean, we you know, we did a show recently. We showed where we draft. We traded for Christian Kirk. We traded for uh, Hollywood Brown in the same team. We got a mock going on right now that we're going to do a show about. And you took Christian Kirk and Hollywood Brown back to back. So you put your uh, money where your mouth is often with those guys. And I agree. I mean, uh, the thing is, even in these startups, I, I, I like. Look at I, that right there. Eight, two, nine, one, Deontay Yeah, Johnson. Yeah, you, you got it going right DJ there. DJ Moore, JSN. <laughs> so yeah. I'm telling you all, like this is. That's exactly how you're drafting right there. Yeah. I like the ability to get those guys later. I like the, uh, the ability to get some studs at the beginning that are complete dynasty assets and that make you feel fantastic and then take some time off in the middle and pick some other type you know chase around some guys and then you come back around and you find yourself you know the kirk or the hollywood browns and and to be able to you know layer up some startability you know while some of your rookies that you just took time with with you know round six seven rounds five six seven i got these rookies that i'm gonna put on my team as my really big escalators and then I'm going to come back in and, and round eight and nine, and I'm going to grab my starters. Punch you in the face with point yeah. getters that um, we know. Yeah, like point getters. Get. I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab some point getters that are not 31. Right. Exactly. Right? That's, That's all there is to that. You know, it's the, I, could, I could grab a point getter in Mike Evans, but he's 31, and, and, you know, and I'd have to do it a round and a half earlier than the Christian Kirk. And, you know, you can get point getters around those around those same ranges, but there's there's still 30, mm-hmm. 31. And I just, you know, I'll take the 26, 27, even 28 year old Godwin. Yeah. Um, oh, for sure. In those positions. All right. Cool. I like that. I mean, I don't have a, a terrible amount more buys. I could go down a little further and, and get you some running backs. That I like I love the Friar Muth 11 a further. I love Friar Muth at 11, seven. I love uh, Dalton Schultz, 11, oh, eight uh, again. Diggs ain't going to be around forever, and, and they paid Schultz, and they they have felt like Schultz and and Stroud had something working last season. Yeah, I like love my, this Daniel Jones at eleven oh nine. I, I gotta that. go. I gotta go up before we keep. I got, okay. I got, uh, Christian Watson ten eleven eighty p at the end of the tenth round. He's on my team every time. And then Blake Corum with or without Kyron Ooh. with Ky- with Kyron, I gotta have him. Yeah, but without like. It's the offense. It's the idea that if Kyron goes down, Blake Corum is going to be in there crushing as well. Yeah, I'm loving the Blake Corums in the 11th round. I mean, to be honest with you, I love this big chunk right here. I love this, this like 11. I'll give you, I'll give you Corum in there. If I don't have, Ky, if I don't have Kyron, I'm, I'm probably not looking at Corum to be honest. But I feel what you're saying there. But this 11-3 to 
12, 6, 12, 7 is a whole lot of guys that I just find myself smashing in every draft. Bunch of running backs here that you like. I like the rookie in, in right to have some fun. Charbonnet is, is the Kenny Walker cuff, which is a, we've talked mm-hmm. about this before, but the reason why I like Kenny so much, same reason we've been talking about Kyron this episode. Sinnott right there, tight end premium. I love taking Boom. Yeah, I love taking 11, shot 12. Sinnott. Love Kendra as a piece down the road. Connor, if you need the starter and you've built guys that you built a team that you feel pretty comfortable year one. Zach Moss, I don't mind. Chubb, sure, but love the downs, like the Lloyd. Singletary and Chase Brown. Then a little later, I love, I, I like this. This is an, a good range for me. And Schultz and Fryermuth are all kind of in that range as well. Brian Robinson, Jalen Polk, 11 4. So, got to get that Isaiah Likely. A lot oh of good gosh. stuff in there. Sorry. No. Jumped ahead, but. Scroll no, no. down and saw that. Yeah, I'm, talent everywhere. I mean, that's the drafts this season are going to be so much fun. There's there's pockets that you just want to be moving around and trying to get, you know, in this two or three round pocket, you want to be moving around and having three or four picks in there. So uh, definitely keep an eye out for the dynasty draft strategy coming up so we can walk through all that fun stuff. And yeah, Jay Wayne, I, I, of course, you like the likely there. That's mm-hmm. a that's dude. He's a, getting so slept on. I don't know why. Did y'all not see him play? It's a long term, like, probably a play. And I, I don't it's know how dynasty. the Ravens keep him off the field and don't I, design more stuff with those two guys, especially the deficit of wide receiver that they're at right, right. now. It doesn't make any sense that you wouldn't be doing that. Just put him out there, wide receiver. Just put him in the slot. Yeah. Cool jump. So you know, likely is like a thirteenth round pick. Yeah, it's too easy. Um, it's not that much fun to pull the trigger Whatever, on Whatever, I love it. Because there I'd are, I take him earlier, but he does, You don't have to, you know. And and I, you know, of course, I love the Jacoby Myers, okay. and I love the I love the Jermaine Burton. Uh, but you know, likely is a nice little nineteen, eighteen, nine, eighteen, eleven. Like when he got his shot, like he 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 got his shot and he excelled. Played played like, well. That's not even put tight end premium numbers right there. Right. Like, give me that guy. I don't care if Andrews there. I don't care about Lamar. Just give me that guy. Yeah, it's late, and it's late. So, yeah. All right. Easy money. That's going to wrap up the buys for the new ADP that we got over here. Make sure you go check out the uh, the free discord and the five dollar holler discord. You get three extra episodes with the Patreon subscription of the five dollar holler at, at a minimum uh, a month. We got roster reviews going over there. We got some more roster reviews coming for your pleasure. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, five star review if you're listening on the pod. Um, I know you can see the numbers. Just tap that five stars. I can see know? the numbers. Not all of y'all are hitting them five stars. No, you're near. Go hit them for us. Hit them for us. And when you're you're you're, you're you're listening to this, you're watching this video on YouTube right now. Give us a comment, and then we're gonna comment back and give us another comment. Help out the algorithm for your boys. Come on, let's go. Yeah, people helping people. Yeah, Just beating this algorithm. Just beating it to death. Like Slap, the, ambidextrously the, uh, slapping ass with both hands. What was that hitchhiker? That the hatchet hitchhiker. <laughs> too much, too much. Is that All a right. dance? No, no. It was a, that was a that was a that's a real thing. Uh, they could have named Google it. Google it. All right, we'll catch you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>